Should you buy a pulse oximeter? If someone has a reliable pulse oximeter at home and they know how to adequately use it, it can be beneficial for some people. Having normal oxygen levels can be reassuring, although there's no guarantee that someone won't have a fast decline with their breathing status. It is quite possible that someone has normal oxygen levels and can quickly progress to very low oxygen levels, sometimes that are life-threatening. And there are so many factors that come into play. One is the quality of the pulse oximeter itself. Two, how well the person is using it. Three, various factors that artificially raise or lower the reading of the pulse oximeter. And most importantly, the different factors that have to do with the person, such as what underlying medical conditions they have, or do they have sudden worsening of their illness? Do they have new infection that's changing things? So these are all factors that are going to have to be accounted for. Another factor to consider is what is their oxygen level at baseline? I have plenty of patients who are at home who have an oxygen saturation of 90%, and that is their baseline. That's the best they can get. Some of them have lower oxygen levels than that, and they require supplemental home oxygen. So if someone normally has a baseline O2 saturation of 100%, and they're now reading at 93%, that's much more concerning than someone who has a baseline of 93%. So that's another factor to consider. But generally speaking, when I'm on the phone with one of my pulmonary patients, and I'm trying to figure out if I should send them to an ER or an urgent care center, I want to know some more things, because even if the oxygen level is accurate, it's not the only thing to consider. Besides what we already talked about, it helps to know some more information about that person, such as, do you feel short of breath? How many breaths per minute are you taking? Are you struggling to move air in and out of your lungs? Is there any cyanosis of the fingers or the toes? Meaning, are the toes or the fingers, do they have this bluish, purplish hue to them? Are there any other concerning symptoms, such as chest pain, lightheadedness, dizziness? Or if you're thinking about COVID, is there any fever or body aches or cough or loss of taste or loss of smell? When someone with COVID-19 does have symptoms, the most common symptoms are going to be fever, cough, and shortness of breath. Although shortness of breath is a subjective feeling, that alone can be enough to seek medical attention. Most, but not all, people with COVID pneumonia have shortness of breath. Most, but not all, people who have low oxygen levels have shortness of breath. But there are some people with COVID-19 who don't necessarily feel short of breath despite having COVID pneumonia and despite having low oxygen levels. Does that mean you should run out and buy a pulse oximeter? Maybe. Before you decide on whether or not you're likely to possibly benefit from a pulse oximeter, let's understand some things about them. A pulse oximeter is a device that measures the saturation of oxygen in a person's red blood cells. For most people who are healthy, the oxygen saturation is 100%. That's the highest number that anyone can possibly get. There is no 110% here. Most devices will clip onto your finger. They work by measuring the amount of light transmitted or reflected through the skin at two different wavelengths. And then they use mathematical algorithms to estimate the level of oxygen saturation in the blood. Smartphone apps, they don't generate as accurate readings because the camera can't measure the light reflection at two wavelengths. So the oxygen saturation readings that are obtained through an app on a smartphone are not accurate enough to depend on for clinical use. There's actually been a study done on that that showed that these are not reliable. So even though pulse oximeters aren't perfect, they're still much more accurate compared to the smartphone apps. Pulse oximeters are always used in hospitals and are sometimes used at home for people who have underlying health conditions, especially for lung conditions like COPD, emphysema. Now, a lot of people want to know, would a pulse oximeter be a good early indicator of COVID-19 infection? It's unlikely because low oxygen levels are a relatively late indicator of a person with COVID-19 pneumonia. So unless someone is feeling ill or feeling short of breath, the pulse oximeter could be helpful in that situation. In other words, for most people, if they feel fine, the chances of them having low oxygen levels is highly unlikely. So when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic, the purpose of the pulse oximeter for most people is best served when someone is feeling ill and they're deciding on whether or not they should go to the hospital. Here's the other kicker. Let's say someone doesn't have any lung or heart conditions and they feel totally fine and they check their oxygen level and it reads 94%, which is considered low for most people. Does that mean they have COVID pneumonia? Probably not. Well then, doctor, why is it so low? 
Well, it could be that you have an undiagnosed heart or lung condition, but that's highly unlikely. What's more likely is that it's a falsely low reading. For example, there are about seven reasons why someone could have a falsely low reading on that pulse oximeter, such as nail polish, artificial nails, nails that are too long that affect the placement of the pulse oximeter on the finger, cold hands, poor circulation, having high lipids in the blood, and last but not least, the lighting in your environment can actually impact the light that's being used by the pulse oximeter, and that can cause falsely low readings. So all these things that I just mentioned, they can give you a falsely low number. And what we don't want is people unnecessarily seeking medical attention because healthcare workers in certain regions are already overwhelmed during this pandemic. So there's really only three scenarios in which having a pulse oximeter might be useful. Okay, scenario number one, you already have or have recently have had low oxygen levels either due to an underlying heart or lung condition or possibly a recent infection such as pneumonia. Okay, scenario number two, you have symptoms that are concerning for COVID, especially like fever, cough, body aches, but especially if you have shortness of breath. Scenario number three, you already have tested positive for COVID-19 and you're recovering at home. So if you don't fall into one of these three categories, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna benefit from having a pulse oximeter. But if you do buy one, also know that some are better than others. There are tons of companies that make them and they all have their own algorithms to calculate that number. And some give more accurate readings than others. So I'll put some links below to some of the better ones. Me personally, I don't have a pulse oximeter and I don't really feel the need to get one. You might argue that I fall into one of those three categories, which is kind of questionable. I do have exercise induced asthma. So basically I only get asthma when I work out in the cold weather. So other than that, my asthma is very well controlled. Now, when I do get asthma, when I'm exercising in the cold weather, that does trigger my asthma to the point where it's causing inflammation within the airways of my lungs. And also uh, in our airways or around our airways, we have smooth muscle and that smooth muscle constricts and that's due to whatever's triggering the asthma. So when that constriction occurs, that's called bronchospasm. So with asthma, there's not only bronchospasm, but there's also inflammation within the lungs. And it's the inflammation that, don't, that not only makes people more prone to getting infections, but also it's the inflammation that could make the asthma worse when you do get an infection. So people with uncontrolled asthma, that's who I would put into one of those categories. But also realize that asthma is not a condition of low oxygen. Asthma is a condition, like I mentioned, you have the bronchospasm and the inflammation, but that in itself is not what's causing low oxygen levels. People with asthma don't get low oxygen levels unless they're on the brink of requiring a breathing tube, meaning a ventilator. So it's only for the people who have an asthma attack where it's so severe that they have to go and get a breathing tube in the hospital at that point, that's when they can start to have low oxygen levels. But even then, when they do require a breathing tube, they don't always have low oxygen levels. So a pulse oximeter for asthma by itself is not gonna do you any good. The way that we monitor asthma patients in the out setting, in the outpatient setting, is actually by more subjective. So how are they feeling? Are they feeling short of breath? Are they having wheezing? Are they able to move air in and out, either subjectively or by measuring it with a peak flow monitor? So that's how we measure asthma in the outpatient setting, not with a pulse oximeter. There are other medical conditions that we want people to have a pulse oximeter at home. For example, people with advanced COPD slash emphysema, people with pulmonary hypertension that's advanced. So these are the more common scenarios where we want someone to have a pulse oximeter at home. But again, to get it just for COVID, unless you have one of these underlying conditions or unless you have symptoms of COVID or you're concerned that you tested positive for COVID and there's that concern that you're getting worse. So unless you're in one of those three categories, you're not really gonna benefit from a pulse oximeter. With that said, hey, you wanna drop the 50 bucks, it's not gonna hurt by any means. We just don't want people to unnecessarily seek medical attention. That's all. Well, thanks for watching this video. I know I have an upcoming video that's gonna be posted tomorrow. It's gonna be on blood clots and why there's so many blood clots going on with COVID. My goodness, so many things going on. I'll catch you in the next one. Proper use of the inhaler is to shake it up, 
and then act like you're taking a big puff or you're not acting. <laughs> Gotta hold it for like, you know, five, ten seconds. <laughs> Get the total lung capacity so that medication gets in there. <sighs> it feels good.